Welcome to Sustainable Sailing. In this week's video we make some progress on the Dyneema chain plate loops for our mizzen rig, the mizzen mast foot, some work on the battery box and we've got some unboxing too. So a whole load of stuff that fits between the videos where we've been working on the DIY mast tangs. More of that with the Mark III version will come in hopefully next week's video. Enjoy watching. It's Sunday and it's taken till nearly two o'clock for the rain to stop to allow us to fit our pad underneath the mizzen mast foot. This is the pad that Jane made. <laughs> now this is the pad that Jane made me lighten. <laughs> I took one look at it and thought, oh my goodness me, that is just enormous. So we've shaved another kilo off it by uh, chamfering the underside that you can't quite see at the moment. So we're just putting thickened epoxy on there, put the string in place to pull it up to there. And once we've got this pad fitted, we've got the two beams there to fit underneath it and then the whole lot should become bonded into a single very strong tied together support for our mizzen mast. I'm going to stop filming there because I need to go up and pull the strings. Aha! It's uh, Wednesday the 29th of June and for the first time this week it's been a dry afternoon. So I've made some progress and the first thing is to see under that stack of weights is the mast foot. I fiberglassed the area. Now I've just put some thickened epoxy and then inside the plastic bag, the actual mast foot. So hopefully that will ensure that it's absolutely um, the right shape for that mast foot. Hello, it's Thursday, the end of June and making huge progress towards being able to get our mizzen mast up. So let's show you some of the things that are happening. First of all, all that beam has been fitted, both beams and the plates with thickened epoxy. I've sanded it, I just got to acetone it, and then I'm just going to put some fiberglass tape to cover all of that area. And same at the far end, I've got a piece of timber to put in to join this bulkhead to this beam. And once that fiberglassing work has all dried, I'm just going to put some bolts through. So I think I'm looking at a bolt through here, a bolt through here in the post, one through there, one through that post, one at the other end to join the two support beams, and one through the support beam and the bulkhead and the post at the far end. So um, I don't want to do that until I've done the fiberglassing so that the bolts are on top and could always be undone. I've been working on what we call our mushrooms. And these are the ways that we're going to stop water from that runs along the side deck from going down into the Dyneema chain plate loop. Not just water, but particularly we don't want gravel running down. That bit of string is what we pulled the backing plate up with. There's a large hole there, I think 45 millimeter, that's been filled with thickened epoxy. That will be epoxied onto there, and that onto there. That gives us that mushroom shape, narrower and then taller so that when we create a material sleeve it will go over there and tighten up around the narrow bit uh, and be held on. The water coming along the deck won't be able to go in up to what that height is fine above that the material will stop it going in as well and that material will come right the way up and cover the lashing so go as far as where it turns into a single shroud so protects all of that from chafe uv and from water we have eight of those because we have the two four stays for the mizzen mast the two lower shrouds the two cap shrouds and at the back there the two running back stays so four per side 
making eight. We have our first chain plate loop in position. Just the reminder, this is essentially an overhand knot soft shackle. We've got a neoprene pad so that when that is pulled up to the chain plate, the knot sits on something that's got some give so that it will distribute its load more evenly. We've got the FR4 plate, two sheets of nine millimeter plywood, and then the deck. And all of that, apart from the FR4, was drilled out and then filled with thickened epoxy. Here is that core that's left. You can see the FR4 on the bottom, and that's 52 millimeters in total. But the really good news is that having drilled out for the smaller hole for this chain plate loop, all you can see is thickened epoxy. So all our hull deck joint and the plywood is all properly sealed by that thickened epoxy. I've got at the moment four of these to put in the aft cabin. They go close together. I think that's the cap shroud and that's the lower. No, it might be the other way around. That's the cap shroud and that's the lower. Anyway, drilled the holes on this side and got to drill the holes on the other side. Let's just go on deck and we can have a look at um, how that looks in practice for attaching the, the rigging. I've now done the fiberglass and thickened epoxy on top so that's ready to be through bolted. Here is what it looks like on deck. Pull it up there's the low friction ring that will be used for the lashing to tension the rig and it's coming through the mushroom which is not fixed in place or sanded or epoxied so those will be epoxied protected after being sanded glued to the deck that then is what a Dyneema chain plate a la vida looks like now somewhere here yeah that's what you need we need to make it's incredibly simple as far as uh, splicing work goes we've got two loop splices here's one that's um, not fully made and was a first attempt so you create a loop splice in each end you put the line through itself here which will provide the loop for the low friction ring and then these two tails you tie an ordinary overhand knot and then put the tails over the knot so that they pull in tight so you can just about see perhaps that's one loop and that's the other loop that were pulled over and have all been tightened up and this was pulled against straight against FR4, so you can see it's done some crushing of the surface of those fibres there. That was one of the ones we tested to four, about four tonnes. We're hoping that that neoprene uh, down there will uh, ensure that the load gets a little bit more evenly distributed. And also the hole in the neoprene is a little bit smaller, so again it means this is going through something very soft uh, to avoid chafe that then is where we're at so we've got two holes made on this side and ready to make the two holes on the other side saturday the 2nd of july it's blowing again but jane is sanding the mushroom pieces for where the shrouds well, the chain plate loops go into the deck. So the wooden pieces are the top collar that will stop the fabric sleeve from sliding up. And the FR4 pieces are the lower part. And that's what they will look like. 
today we're just doing a little test of the mizzen mast and boom to check that uh, the fittings will go back on and see what it looks like with the sail on. We've not tried to put the whole sail foot into the boom, just the guide at the end, but the main sail, sorry, the mizzen sail track is working really smoothly, so that's good news. We haven't got the head of the mast on yet, but that is a pretty nice condition Crusader sail. It doesn't look like we've got space to shorten the boom very much there, so we'll leave that as it is and make our solar work around it. We've got whole boxes of bits that came off the mast. Currently it has single speed six winches on. We're replacing the winches that were on the main mast. So we've got a single speed 10 and a two speed 16. So we'll put those on the mizzen mast. Uh, they will just about fit on the existing plates. We had to take the plates off the main mast because they were bit buckled and they were quite badly corroded, whereas the mizzen ones are fine. Obviously in an ideal world we'd switch to uh, self-tailing winches but that can wait so we're leaving the old cleats and winches on at the moment with just a little bit of cleaning the mast foot has fitted back on with a bit of cleaning the boom end fitting has fitted back on and up here to be honest I'm not entirely sure at the moment whether the masthead goes on with more sticking forwards presumably for a mizzen stay sail or with the extra sticking back because I think that was used for the topping lift. Got to do a little bit of uh, research to check that. We've got the plates that will need riveting on here and here for the shroud attachment points. Other than that, that's all looking quite nice and uh, not too scary. We're rethinking slightly, so we've got that working mizzen tang created from FR4. We're now looking at a Mark III, which we're going to be creating out of a different material. We've taken some uh, feedback and so hopefully I've got the bits arriving this week and in the next video we'll be able to show you a Mark III. This, this would work and it can be created with just a handsaw and a drill but our next one we're going to create using a, a router table and we think we can get something that will look better and be harder wearing. It's Sunday and Jane is mixing thickened epoxy, her favourite task, and we're about to fit the mushrooms on this side and on this side and here you can see I've used the Dremel to chase out all the cracks which are only gel coat, only in the gel coat but that was one of the key reasons why we started this whole journey towards new chain plates. That was the, the backing plate had failed, caused those cracks. We're ready to fit these mushrooms. We're just going to glue them together and on with thickened epoxy. And then when that's gone pretty uh, green, pretty hard, we will coat the outside with thin epoxy so that they are fully sealed in every direction and once they have uh, that's all cured and set we will be ready for the cap shroud and the lower shroud for the mizzen the others i can do without disturbing our bed so we've got that one there which goes into the cockpit locker same on the other side but it, that goes into the corridor that's for the four stays and then these ones here which go into the lazarette which are for the running back stays. These are the ones that are actually into the after cabin so it's uh, they're the ones that potentially make a mess where our bed is. Okay thickened epoxy is ready I'll get on with that. It's only yesterday that I uploaded the video with our version 2 
of the master tanks but I've had some deliveries today and that means I'm ready to start working on version 3 learning from the comments we've already had on both versions 1 and 2 we think this is going to be the one unboxing well first not to unbox but we had to get a new shop vac because the Draper one that we've had for years just suddenly stopped working no use of serviceable parts so we've gone with the Makita so that it's the same as all our other cordless tools opens up there and the rechargeable battery goes in pretty pleased with this this is the 750 um was it um I can't remember the model number it's a 750 something or other waste goes into this bottom compartment it comes with a HEPA filter but that's the only filter it comes with and whilst this can take water you need a different filter for that and it doesn't come with much in the way of tools you've just got a fairly short hose a nozzle type thing and a flat type suction attachment you have to order everything else separately it does have two speeds and you can attach the hose on this end if you want to blow instead of uh, vacuum that leads me to the next box which is I hope parts our, th our theory here is that whilst this is definitely not a shop vac that we could use it for building work like we used the old uh, draper for many years this will be a lot more useful in terms of being able to take it on the boat when we're cruising in here we have what I hope is the right attachment for some tools the part numbers I have to say Makita you are lousy at helping me work out what is the right connection tool to connect to different um, uh, of your products got one of those got a second HEPA filter these can be washed but our experiences with these kinds of filters is they take so long to dry and you only wash them when they get really bad and then you can't do any work until they're dried so having one to swap a pre-filter a bag basically to go over the outside of these filters which should protect them stop them uh, getting so clogged up and then inside the box inside the box is the filter to use when you're vacuuming up water to get your bilge clean there is a float switch in the vacuum cleaner we should be safe backing up water it will switch off before you get a short out that's the first box second box this is the very best kind of box because what's in here came for free we're using a GoPro 10 for all our filming we love it but when you want to use a different microphone for it and quite often I've as you have seen recently I'm outside and if I'm on my own I'm using our Rode Wireless Go we've only got the single version but when you need to clip the receiver onto the media unit of the GoPro 10 so that you can connect it to the jack we found you need to take the foam wind muff off the media mod and I lost it so because we have a GoPro subscription I had to ask answer a million questions about myself but they've sent us a replacement for free Look at the size of that box for that tiny little thing, but free. Thank you, GoPro. Worth getting that subscription because you save the cost of the subscription when you buy the GoPro anyway. Today, my job is the end of the battery compartment, which is also the aft end. It's the forward end of the battery compartment, which becomes also the aft end of our built-in water tank that we're eventually going to put here. I've made a template for this out of strips of hardboard and I'm just going down to cut that out of a sheet of ply. Okay, 
template it's on the ply just got to draw around it and then cut it out it will be very firmly fixed in with bracing on the sides epoxy thickened epoxy on all the edges and glass fiber tape on both sides it doesn't actually have to be a perfect fit although as templates go this is one of my more accurate ones i feel let's see if i'm right in a minute new bulkhead is in and that's beautifully stiffened up the end of that battery box to support the floor now i'm just putting the old floor back in and i've just got to put because that is a little bit lower than this i just need to put a little support there for that end of the original floor until we replace that very happy with that it's now ready to epoxy in as soon as we get round to that oh look it's another unboxing and i've got two packages from digital yacht i know what these are i hope fairly uh, obvious type of packaging for this one as to what this will be oh come on right. oh <coughs> right nicely protected i guess would be nicer guys to find a plastic free way of doing the protection and guess what more plastic inside but this is the aerial for our AIS I think the uh, cable is coming separately or it might be in this box here the reason for getting this so long before we're ready to go and launch is that we want to put the cabling and aerials and antennas on before we put the mast up oh right actually i was completely wrong i think because this is the box for the wi-fi extender so that's the aerial for the wi-fi extender we're putting both the wi-fi extender and the ais and um, both antennas on top of the a mast we're told that they shouldn't interfere with each other um, just in case it reduces the range of the AIS to have the Wi-Fi antenna next to it I'll put the AIS aerial at the forward end of the top of the mizzen mast because it seems to me that looking forward is uh, the most critical uh, direction to get the best signal this I'm told should allow us to get a Wi-Fi signal from uh, six miles or so uh, which will then connect into what we will eventually put in as an integrated communication so we will have the Wi-Fi yeah the Wi-Fi extender and we will also have a mobile phone extender um, the air antennas for that will go on the main mast uh, they'll be in integrated together connected up to uh, the Raspberry Pis, the navigation stuff and so on so that we have the best comms we can manage um, hoping that we will buy the antennas to go on the main mast and put off buying the actual boxes that uh, date so quickly uh, until we're ready to use them but uh, this is basically just uh, a 12 volt wireless repeater so I don't think that's going to change very much in terms of standards and it came with the aerial with the antenna we've just been cutting out the grooves for the wires for the battery box so this is the lid over the lower section of batteries and the cables just need to be tucked inside these grooves having cut those we're going to just use the router to round off all these edges so that um, the cables don't get snagged Good. 
we only have to do these on the forward two battery um, boxes because the after we've got the floor height a bit higher so the battery cables have more space and just to summarize what we've done since we've also done some work to create the holes to run the cables between the batteries and through the battery box and then finally we've brought our electric motor inside the main saloon giving us the space to get on with all that cabling in coming weeks that's all for this week don't forget to like subscribe comment and share thanks very much for watching